what is going on out there good people and welcome back to lmd trading where i am living my dream trading hope everybody out there is doing well as for myself i am doing pretty good I'm trying to get back to getting these daily trade recaps out of the way been kind of slipping the last week um, my schedule just didn't really permit me to sit down in the evenings and get these done so trying to get back in the swing of things and get today's recap out of the way i have also taken on a challenge so i want to kind of speak on that so we are going to look at the details for today hopefully kind of go through these trades fairly quick and then i'm gonna speak on this challenge that i just put myself on so let's go ahead let's look at the details for today looking at trade of eight we see we're in trade for june 26 took a total of 10 trades gross pnl 132.50 we paid 22 dollars and 62 cents in commissions total pnl 109.88 is what we took home that is on eight green trades made 248 dollars and 50 cents Took two losing trades, gave back 116.50. Largest winning trade, 86. Largest loser trade, 89. Ouch, 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 ouch. That was a trade that we didn't need to take right there. Easy numbers there, eight and two. That's an 80-20 ratio. Come over here and look, sure enough, 80-20. So not bad. Looking at PL history, we see this morning we started off green right off the bat. Very nice. Coming up through here, I said I was done. I said I was done. And then I got back to the desk around one o'clock, took a couple of trades, kind of flat. And then I took a red, gave back some money. And then that $89 trade popped up. Boom, took me red. And then I took a green one that got me green, green. Um, this is bad, y'all. This is I need to work on this. This is that word that I don't like to use. I don't like this word. Demons. Trading demons crept in. I was green and I said I was done and I sat back down. And that little voice, that little dude on my right hand shoulder said, hey, you could take a trade and get a little bit more money. You didn't quite make it to $100 today. Even after the little voice on my right, on my left shoulder was like, nah, dude, we good. It's Monday. Go on, keep that money. You, you all know that little guy on the right hand shoulder usually is going to win and it usually gets you in trouble. And that's exactly what he did. Made me pay some stupid tax, but found a good trade. Got back green. Um, kind of scroll down. Look at what we did. First trade out the blocks was a good trade. Um, kind of feeler trades coming through here. We'll look at them on the chart. You'll see what I mean when I say feeler trades. That was that one that kind of gave back some of the money. And then the boom bammer gave back all of it. And then we took two trades at the end to get us back green. 86 and 78. So that's what we did today. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the charts real quick. What really matters um, I kind of got a late start this morning. Didn't really turn the computer on to about 930. Trading only two things. You can somewhat do that. I, my charts stay marked up the way they are. Didn't really need to add any new key areas to it. I look at the MNQ and I see this beautiful picture right here. This is what I call the stack. Fast moving average, slow moving average, VWAP. When they are lined up like that, that's a thing of beauty. Normally, this fast moving average is just going to act as key support and keep pushing it higher. Second line of defense, slow moving average usually could act as a second line of defense, but we see we didn't need it. And then VWAP, when you get down here to VWAP, you can pretty much know you rolling over. So nice, clean move. I just jump in the trend right here. I just jump in right there. My target is going to be this red line. You see a blue line, you see a red line. Blue lines, regular price levels. Red lines, I try to mark that I know that those are kind of significant. So that's my target. But when I get in the trade, this thing sets my bracket right there. 
So you see me getting out. You see the red line. I did not really want to get out of this trade right here. Just came up and it tagged my target. I was risking $20. It made $40. So that's why you see that clean $40 trade. When this gets me out of the trade, and I'm like, dude, my target is up here at this red line. I jump right back in the trade. So I'm in the trade. This thing comes up, comes over, comes back down. When it makes this move, I take the stop to break even, tags me. Make $4.50. Um, we do see, let's see, 93. That's $10. I was up $20 in that move. $2 a point, 10 points. Easy math. With these key levels, how I trade them is the candle that's working. I want to see it break the key level. Next candle to make the new high lets me know the move is still going high. So when this didn't break it, I really should have been getting out closer up here, locking in some better gains and then wait for the reset. So doesn't happen. Comes up, stop out, break even. And then I get back in right here. But remember what I just said? I want to see it break a key level and then go higher. So I'm in here and I think about it and I'm like, dude, that's you're not trading how you're supposed to be trading. So I jump out of the trade. We notice it comes over, breaks that key area. Next candle comes up is where I should be getting in the trade. So I do. Now, instead of managing this out some kind of way i get in right here this candle goes comes up i set my stop comes back pulls it tags me i make 1450 on that trade right there let me make sure so that's one two three four I make twenty dollars on that trade but what i have found and this comes with just reviewing charts if this candle makes a move like that. This is a decent sized candle. This makes a decent sized move. Find half of the candle and then move it a little below half of the candle. If it's not time to bar by bar yet. What that will do is if this thing makes a big green candle and it pulls back more than half. And let's say at least three quarters of a bottom and tail and then you only got a quarter of it. That's the actual body of the candle. That's very bearish. Next candle is probably going to go lower. But this didn't give up half of that candle. And it kept going higher. This didn't give up half the candle. And it kept going higher. See the pattern? This didn't give up half. This one actually opened right here and came all the way back down. And then the bulls pushed this all the way back up. So I got out of this trade a little earlier than I should have. Come up here. And then it finally rolls down. Um, decent volume, not more than that one though. And you notice candles are about the same size, not as much volume in that one. So this pushes it back up, but that was the morning session. Decent trading. I get up and I leave the desk, come back at 11 o'clock. Markets moving down fast is below the slow. I get in a trade right here. Black solid line on my charts is previous day's close. So let's look at this. I'm in the trade right there. My stop has to be up here. My target is right there. I have more risk than I have reward. So this thing moves down, take my stop to break even. I get tagged. Next candle, I jump right back in this thing, y'all. Now again, risk, reward, very little. This thing goes in my direction. I take stop break even again. I get out. First one I make $4. Next one I make $1.50. Basically making my commissions. I treat previous day's close same way I treat my price levels. I want to see it break and finish below it. And then the next candle to break below it. And I'm going to trade to the next level. Look at what this does. It breaks. Boom. One two minute candle down to the next level. 55 straight down to 35. Call it 30. 55, 30. What's that? 25 points in two minutes on one contract. That's $50. It's $50, y'all. Five contracts. That's 250 bucks. After I got 
bamboozled taking these bad trades here, I totally missed this move. And then you notice this thing just kept on flushing down. It breaks this level, breaks this level, comes down. Previous low of day is where it finds support at. So I'm done at this point. I didn't left. I come back. I sit down at the desk a little later. Look, thick red line. That, that's a fairly significant level. Broke straight through it. Comes and tests these price levels again. Keeps on going. Test another price level. This is what you call kind of bleeding, but it is leaving some green candles in there. We get to one o'clock. Kind of find support off this area. Comes up. And what do you see right there? A uh, blue arrow. Blue arrow means I just took a long trade right there. Well, you just heard me say I like to trade these levels from here to here. Why am I taking a trade in the middle of an area? It's not good. Fast is below the slow. It's not good. But I like the picture. I do like the picture. But everything is telling me that this was probably not a good trade. First thing, if I'm getting in right there, my stop has to be down there. My first area of concern is going to be right here. Risk, reward. Very little reward for the amount of risk I got to take in this trade. As things comes back down, I get stopped out right there. I lose 20 bucks, 27 bucks. So bad trade, just giving up money, just donation. <laughs> One thing I will say, if you look up here, remember there was a thick red line at the bottom? Thick red line up here at the top. This is where I think this trade is coming back up to. This thick red line. Keep that in mind. So I go long, stops me out. You see a pink magenta arrow on the opposite side? That means I just took a short right there, y'all. So I get stopped out. I got the, I won't call that smart. I was about to say get the smart idea. Nope, I get the dumb idea to go short right here. Think about this. Risk, reward. Very little reward to the amount of risk in this trade where I would have to put a stop at. This thing comes up, pushes back down. We're going to go back to what I just spoke on. Stock breaks a key area. I want to see the next candle break it to go lower. This one does the opposite. Comes back up. That's my opportunity to get out making whatever this green trade is going to be. I don't do it. I let this candle close. It shifts over and boom. Takes me right up to where I said my stop needed to be at. That cost me $89. But you see another blue arrow on the other side. You know what that means? I just went long right there. Now, if you remember, this is my ultimate target. My stop. It can't be right here. My stop has to be way down there. Risk. Reward. See how that works. This one, not quite one to one, but it's better than those ones where I was risking three to make one. So I enter this trade. Stops way down there. Let's watch this. So this thing pulls back. Like, yeah, buddy, it came right up here to this level. I'm like, here we go. But again, I got faith in that red line. This comes down, taps the line. Remember, my stop is right there. Now imagine if the stop was there. I'm stopped out. I actually stopped out on that candle. But put my stop down here. This thing comes back, pushes up, test this level again, comes back down. Gives it one more valiant effort. Again, stop us down there. We finally, finally make the move. And look where it comes to. Right up there to that level. Make $164 in this trade. But full disclosure, this line was not right here at the time. My target was 14,940. Let's go to 14,940. I'm going to drop a line right there. It was a blue line at that time, too. So I'm going to drop 19, 14,940. This is where my target was at. 
So when this broke over it, I got out of the trade. You notice I have bar timers on all of my charts. I use that to exit trades. If this candle makes this huge move and this bar timer is like it, that is right now a minute and 30, a minute. Usually I'm going to get back out of the trade when this comes back down because that bar has too much time in it. But if this bar is way up here with 30 seconds in it, I'm going to wait to kind of see how it closes. When I was in this trade, it had 30 seconds in it. So I kind of got out of this a little bit early. Again, this red line was not here. So I was well over my target. I was over my target. So I was good with that. Got out of the trade and I looked at the bar timer. I'm like, man, you got out of that a little bit too soon. And I came over and I looked to the left. And you see 14,940. That's the line that I just dropped. I looked and I saw this area right there. And I saw it there. And that's what made me drop this red line. And I said, that's a key level. So I came, I clicked it. I got rid of my blue line. And I got out of that trade right there. But let's watch and see what this does. Pulls back, came back. That's what? Key price level. Comes up and it tries it again several times. When this thing does not go, you really could have took a short right there, put the stop up on the top side. And look at that. Imagine getting in right there. 14,945. This thing gives you 25 points. $2 a point. That's $50 on one contract. Decent, decent trade right there. But that's what we did today, y'all. That is how we traded. Decent, decent trading, I think. I think it was decent. Um, I just took some trades that kind of eh, didn't really manage them out the best as I could. But um, yeah, it made it work. But the challenge, let's talk about this challenge that I keep mentioning. Um, buddy of mine, he's getting into trading. He's been trading for some time now. He's trading futures too. And he mentioned that he was going to look at trading in a prop firm. He was looking at Apex Trader. I've heard about prop firms. Some good, some bad. I was like, nah, okay. Let me know how that works out for you. So he mentioned it, took some, he signed up for it. Let me know how he liked it, how it was working out for him. So I went and I looked at it. And what he's doing is Apex Trader Funding. So with Apex Trader, you have to sign up for evaluation account. They give you some rules that you have to abide by. Um, and if you can show yourself approved, they will give you money to trade with. So there's some of the reasons why they say to choose them. You receive 100% of the first $25,000 per account that you make. After that, you keep 90%. You get two payouts per month, qualifying as little as seven days. You can trade full-size contracts or just not micros. You can trade E-minis. No scaling or failing by going over contract size. No daily drawdowns. Trade on holidays. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, okay. Sounds good. Let me look into it a little bit more. I did that. Key thing. How much does it cost? I click get started and I come over here and I look. They'll give you $25,000. These are evaluation accounts. They'll give you $25,000 to kind of trade in the SIM account. You have to make $1,500. Trailing thresholds, $1,500. This is kind of interesting. Um, scaling, none. Ninja license fee. You ain't got to pay for that. You don't got to pay for real-time data. $147 a month. Come over to $50,000. They'll give you $50,000 starting. You can trade up to $10,000. Minis, 100 micros. Profit gold, $3,000. Trailing threshold, $2,500. That's that interesting thing again. I'll probably do a video kind of explaining Apex. I'm going to kind of just breeze through this right quick. Again, your fees are covered. This one's 167 
so on and so forth, depending on how much funding that you want. What this means is you have to make $3,000 in a minimum of seven days. They don't give you a maximum. That's why it says in as little as seven days. So you make $3,000 in minimum seven days. They'll let you trade with real money after that. If you don't blow this trailing threshold, I'll make a video explaining this trailing threshold. This is very interesting, but when you understand it, this is not a bad thing. Now the question was, do I want to invest $167 a month in myself? It's like, nah, I don't think so. And then my homeboy hit me up and he said, hey, they got a special right now. 90% off. 90% off. I'm like, no way. I look into it. Sure enough, he provides me with the code. And you can sign up right now. 90% off. And then each additional month is discounted as well. And you can work to become funded with Apex Trader. And if you don't believe me, I signed up for three accounts. You can sign up for as many accounts as you want, up to 20. So I guess it's not as many as you want. You can sign up for 20 of them. I signed up for three right now. Amount, $167. I did the $50,000 challenge. And I'm going to probably do one more, and I'm going to do that one at $25,000. $50,000 account, $167. Look at the billing terms. $16.70 for the first month, $33.40 for each additional month. You can cancel whenever you want to. You're not obligated to any time frame. You can cancel whenever you want. If you wash out, you can buy a reset. The reset is $80. That's half of what this is. But why would you want to do that when you could just buy another account? That's why I'm buying more accounts right now under this special thing. Also, if you do become profitable and you do have a winning strategy, you can have all these accounts take a trade at the same time. And if you go online, you notice a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. They just killing it right now. So that is the challenge that I have signed up for. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'll keep y'all informed. Like I said, I have taken money out of my main account. So this challenge will allow me to trade with size. Um, one thing that you'll learn reviewing Apex is size can get you in trouble with that trailing threshold. So you do have to understand that. I'll kind of make some videos just explaining on how I see it. And um, yeah, we're going to do this. We are going to get one, if not all of those accounts funded to where Apex will provide me funding to trade. I got faith in myself. Um, so that is what we're doing. But as always, thanks for checking me out. If you hadn't hit that like button already, please do so. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. If you hadn't hit that like button, please do so. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. And as always, we can continue the conversation in the comments. Time for me to get ready to go throw some bags. Peace.